This time I'm going to show you how I made this handy storage box based on a design from Tilda Seasonal Ideas collection. This is the actual box from the book which I made earlier on. I love making it, I think it's lots of fun, it's really quick, it's very effective and it's very useful but I thought you know I want a bigger one as well so I worked out the way the pattern worked and just made it larger. I'll show, how, show you how I did that shortly. Um, so this is the book that it's come from and let's take a look at the actual project which was this one here. Um, so again this is the size from the book in Tilda fabric this one and uh, they, they look really nice stacked as well. I'll explain later on as well about the Decaville interfacing that I've used and there are alternatives so have a listen later on in the video when we come towards the end and we'll have a chat about that. So you've got very simple instructions on, on how to make them and there's only three steps or three or four steps in the diagram as well so it really is a simple box but I do like that squared base I, d I just think it's a little bit different and it's really easy to do. Um, there is a pattern in the book which I'll show you later on and in just a second I'll explain to you how I made that bigger to make my box which is a little bit bigger than that. So whether you're using these for keeping your notions and you're sewing bits and bobs in, um, the larger one that I made is plenty big enough to keep patterns in as well and using the Decaville, the heavy Decaville, means that it's sturdy enough to, to withstand things that are weighty like that. Um, in my sewing room I think I'll fill the big one with thread because I've outgrown my thread box down here at the moment and maybe the saw on to keep bobbins in. Um, somewhere to keep sharp things like your rotary cutter, again it's quite a size box, you can fill it full of bits and bobs like that, pens, clips, pins, um, there's so many uses for boxes of this kind of size. You could even put a plant in there or store things like your um, cotton wool buds or hairdressing bits and bobs or things in the bathroom as well and what a nice gift idea that would make. So as I explain how you come up with the pattern to make this bigger then you'll understand how you could make them smaller or you can make them even bigger or you could just make a few as they have in the Tilda's book um, all of the same size and stack them as well so I think you'll find it really really useful. So if you don't have the book it's a lot, let me have a quick flip through, it's a lovely book to buy I love Tilda books because um, of the inspiration. So even if you don't follow something all the way through, I love looking at the photos and how they dress their sets. And it's all about that Tilda lifestyle, isn't it? The, the, I think we'd all love to live like that. It just looks like very fresh and healthy, clean living in a beautiful country surrounded with beautiful things. So this is why I find them really inspiring. Um, but there are lots of things in here that you can take inspiration from and make your very own as well. And of course, it wouldn't be a Tilda book without Tilda dolls in there with their nice new summery outfits as well. So that's the book that I've taken it from. With this tutorial, because I'm going to show you the measurements for making this, you don't actually need the book to make this. But I do think it's a good buy if you wanted to go for that as well. So enough chat. Let me show you how I made the pattern. Your already fabric requirements and your cutting instructions are going to be in the description box below. Um, so go choose yourself a couple of fabrics and let's get sewing. If you have the book already then this is the shape of the template so I've traced that off already and I've made myself um, a stiff paper template so I can use it over and over again and I've also made notes for myself about how much fabric I need to use to create the smaller blocks that you see here but I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger so I've figured out the um, perspective of the box shape here and we'll translate that into something that's a little bit larger. So. I'm going to take my ruler and a pen. I'm going to use a sharpie for this one so you can actually see what I'm doing. And I'm going to draw a box. In fact, we'll do it up against the edge of the paper for ease sake, which measures six inches across. And I'm going to come down eight inches. I've just got that, my ruler the wrong way around there. There you go, eight inches, so down to here. and then mark the center point, so that's three inches, and I'll need to make a right angled um, angle to make the point which is the bottom of the box that you see here. So I find the easiest way to do that if you have a ruler like this one is to draw a line down the center and then I'm going to use the edge of the ruler here on the 45 degree angle so that 45 degree line goes straight down here and then simply draw around the edge of the ruler like so. So you could in effect make these in any size that you like as long as this is the 45 degree angle. 
because four of the 45s will make up the 360, which forms this cross shape on the base of the box. So when you cut that out, it's going to look like that. And again, I've put the measurements of my fabric because that's not actually in the book. So the top fabric I've used is 13 inches and the bottom fabric is 8 inches. So I've already cut my fabric out the same here. Now bear in mind if you have a directional fabric, it needs to be the right way up. So this is going to be the fabric that goes on the bottom of my box. And the top fabric creates the border around here and also the lining. So you'll find like with this fabric is directional but you can't really tell too much. Um, this is the tilde fabric so this is the right way up and all of the ones on the inside are upside down. But So with this fabric you can't really tell it doesn't matter but do bear that in mind if you have a very distinctive um, um, dis a direction of fabric. So that's how my, my um, fabric is going to look. So the top fabric here it has got kind of a direction but again you don't notice too much um, because it's got these little blue tits um, but I don't think it's going to be too noticeable if they're upside down because it's only that slim border they will be the right side up when we put those inside the um, inside the box so we'll sew those in just a second I've taken my interfacing and I've used a heavy Decaville interfacing for this one so it's quite firm and it's single-sided fusible so you place your pattern over the decaville, make sure the top line is straight here, so cut that first straight, and then draw around it, move it across, draw around, until you've got four of those all lined up together. Then you're going to cut those out in one piece, as you see here. So we'll come to that in just a second. The first thing we need to do here, though, is to sew together the top and the bottom strips. So let's just pop those pieces right sides together like so. And we'll sew straight across. And I'm using a half, as I've just lost my foot pedal, a half inch seam allowance or, or thereabouts. It's a centimetre will be fine if you're working in metric. And we'll literally just sew those two together. If you wanted to pin them first, then that's entirely up to you, but we're just sewing the, the we're matching the raw edges and sewing. So as long as this cut line is straight, that's all you need to worry about with these two pieces. All right, let's give this a press. And I'm, I'm not pressing the seam open, I'm just going to press it towards the bottom side. And with a nice hot iron, let's pop this over so I've got it the right way round, so my bottom fabric is now at the bottom. I'm going to place my um, Decaville over the seam line. with the top piece overlapping slightly. So I'll tell you what would be a good idea here. This isn't in the instructions, but I think it will help. If you mark an inch or two and a half centimetres from the top of each side, that's going to be the overlap. And then line that up against the seam. A bigger ironing board would be would be useful really so normally I'd, I'd be at the big ironing board not this little one so line that up against the seam and then press so a nice hot iron for this just move that book out of the way and I'm ironing from this side because I need the decaville to be placed exactly over the seam line so not on the edge of the fabric the seam lines here and that's where I've measured my line down so to start with, it takes a little while for the heat to go through, but I'll line from the Decaville side so that I know that it's in the right place. Let's come up to this other side of the seam and just make sure. Now you can steam through the Decaville. It is slightly porous, so you're not going to find that the steam bounces back up at you. But just take your time with this one because we really want it to be stuck. 
Um, when you're turning it through, sometimes it does come away from the fabric. Don't worry about that because you can re-iron it back on again when you've actually finished the box. So now it's held in place, I'm just going to go over from the right hand side. And again, as hot an iron as your fabric will take and just really spend some time making sure that you've ironed every single bit. It will pull away while the, um, the fabric's still warm. So when we finish doing this, we're going to let the whole thing cool down before we start working with it. Now, if you wanted to top stitch along here, then that would be nice. And maybe with this fabric, something like an orange or the blue would really stand out. And actually, I think we'll do that when we've cut this out because um, that's really going to help. You can see that's wrinkled up a little bit. I've still got a little bit of wiggle time. Um, that'll help hold it all together when we turn it the right side out, actually. So we'll, we will do that. So let's just make sure my seam is still matching up here. And just keep ironing till it's all stuck down. All right, well, that's just cooling and setting. Let's do that top stitching. So I can lengthen my stitch slightly. So I've gone up to a 2.8 on this machine. And I'm just going to sew about a quarter of an inch or five millimeters along the seam. I'm only sewing in white, so um, I don't have to change my thread again. But if you do want to put a contrast or a decorative stitch, I think it would look rather nice as well. And I think just along the one side of the seam is absolutely fine. Now let's go back to the ironing board and I'm going to fold my fabric over the edge of the Decaville. And again, iron it. So this isn't going to stick because um, there's no adhesive on this side of the, of the Decaville. So I'm just creasing that like so. Again, all of this isn't in the instructions. I've just found when I'm making the boxes that I've, uh, I've worked out some handy tips to share with you. Now this is going to go back again and fold backwards this way. So along the crease mark that I've just made and just along the top again of that Decaville. Let's roll that up a bit. And then I'm going to cut around the edge through both layers of fabric with a half inch seam allowance. So I can cut the side bits with my rotary cutter. Again, a centimetre seam allowance is fine if that's what you prefer to use. And down there. And I can cut this end the same. You can cut all the way around, but um, you might find it, oops, turn that upside down, a little bit tricky to get into these V shapes of the rotary cutter. So I'm going to draw the seam allowance on for those. So just use my ruler for those bits because that's easy. And then for these sections, I'll mark that with a pen and then cut with scissors. So that's how we're looking. So when the box now goes together, we've got this band that goes across the top and these four sides will all join together like so. So let's open this out. And the first seam to sew, we fold this over, is the two raw edges here. Let's move that out of the way. 
So I'll take a few pins. And I'm just going to match up the seam at the side here and the top of the Decaville. And just pop a pin in there. You could use clips instead if you wanted to. Might be a bit tricky to pin through the Decaville, but you can um, whoops. You can clip that if you prefer, or just pin into the seam allowance as I have here. So that'll be enough for now. Then I'm going to sew across the point, down this side, along here, and down here. And when I come to the Decaville section, I'm just going to feel my way around there because those should line up perfectly. You can feel the two pieces together. And on the lining side, I'm using that half inch seam allowance. Now I will need to leave a turning gap and I'm going to try and leave as big a gap as I can just here in the side. There is a lot to pull through a, a very small hole though, so just, just be warned, your very small turning gap may turn out to be a little bit bigger than you expect. So right, with a half inch or one centimetre seam allowance again. Let's sew. So. so I'm going to stop with my needle down at this point, turn around, straight back down. Now it doesn't matter if you do catch a little bit of the Decaville, the idea is to run the needle up against the edge of the two pieces as they're together. But if you do catch it, don't worry, it's not going to make that much difference. It's not worth un unpicking it just because of that. Again, let's just line that up. You can feel where that is. And so. And then the second piece I'm going to sew is down here. So let's flatten this out. So just along this edge, and just along this edge. So again, when you flatten it, those two pieces should line up perfectly. So let's just sew straight along again the edge of the Decaville. And the same on that lining edge. Just take that pin up while I see it there. Right, then let's open this out. So pull those two pieces away from each other. And we want to line up the centre seam. You can see how that's making the square base now. And sew straight across this line. So it doesn't matter if this gets a little bit crumpled as you push it out of the way. Let's line those up again. You can feel the edge of the Decaville so you know that they're lining up together. So scrunch that out of the way and we'll sew straight down this line here. Now this time I do find it easier not to pin because it does feel as though the whole thing is fighting against me a little bit. So I want to keep pushing it in the right direction and lining that up as I go. So again you can feel where the base is and just keep going in going in small amounts and stop and realign if you need to and so and I'm not worried about which direction the seams are going when I get to that section in the center and so straight across And then you'll see when you open this out how that's making the base square. That'll look a lot better when we turn it the right side out. So let's do the same with the opposite side here. So in the lining section, just in the same way, let's pull open the two sides. This is easier because there's no interfacing on it. So that the seams are meeting in the middle. I mean, ideally, you can squish them in opposite directions and we'll sew straight across here. And 
just making sure those seams are central, the edges are lined up. The seam got pushed in the opposite direction, I'm really not worried about that. Now then, <laughs> you know exactly what I've done. I didn't leave the gap for the seam allowance, did I? Um, for the turning gap, sorry. So I need to get my quick unpick and just quickly unpick a few stitches at the side there. What have I done with that? Do that so often, you know. <laughs> oh, there's my quick unpick. Thank goodness for these little things. I'm just going to undo a few stitches there. I do it with bag making, I do it when I'm lining a jacket. Well, I'll leave the turning up just there and then completely forget all about it. But um, it's not the end of the world, is it? So I could have edited that out. So just make a little split there. Again, this may grow the hole as you turn it through because it is quite small for a lot of fabric to go through. Let's see how we go. push through the base. This is lifting up a little bit. I did warn you that may happen, but we can stick it back down again when we've finished, because we will need to press the box again anyhow. So take your time, just keep going with it. It will come through. So just while I'm fighting with this one, um, the heavy decaval isn't for everybody. It does give a really nice finish to the box and it makes it very crisp and very sturdy. But if, if this isn't for you, then you could easily use um, a foam. So like a, a Bosal single-sided fusible foam would work well, particularly on a bigger box. And that'll give a nice sturdy finish to it as well. Um, you could just use some firm interfacing or a Decaville light, which would be a lot easier to turn through, particularly on smaller ones, on the smaller boxes. Um, or if you wanted to use a fusible fleece, then that would work, but you'd have a much smaller box. Uh, sorry, a much softer box. So again, I'm just pushing out the corners. And you can really see it taking shape now. So you've got this ni nice, neat cross shape in the base. I've got the hole at the side now which needs sewing up, so I'm just going to do that on my sewing machine. If you wanted that to be invisible, then you can do that by hand. So pull the edges of the gap away from each other, line up the ed edges again and just sew straight across the top. I think in the instructions, it tells you to use a basting or a tacking stitch. Personally, I would use a a ladder stitch or a very small slip stitch if I was sewing that by hand but I think it's perfectly okay to do that on your sewing machine and we'll push the lining inside so we're still looking a little bit crinkled so let's take the ironing pad again and just give this another press find it easier to do this time on the inside and with a little iron like this one we can actually iron the base as well because it fits very nicely inside there. So just making sure that the lining is wrapping nice and tightly around the edge of the Decaville and it's not creased upon the inside and as I'm pressing like this I'm re-adhering any of the, um, the Decaville that started to lift up so it's just sticking it all back down again at the same time. So one final thing to do here is to take the side pieces and pinch them and press them to make them square. And that gives your box a nice shape. That is in the instructions. So again, just fold along the crease where it, it kind of wants to go and press. And here and press. And then this piece. And if you wanted to, you can press around this side as well. If you find that a little bit tricky, an idea is to just waft a little bit of steam over the top of here 
and then while it's still warm just crease it with your fingers you may find that an easier way of doing it but be careful because that is going to be very warm while you're creasing it where's this one And that's my little box finished. Well, it's actually quite a big box, to be fair, isn't it? So it is actually, I'm just going to press that again. Um, it is actually quite a quick make when you consider it. Um, but I think it's, I think it's a really useful box, no matter what it is you're storing in there. I do have lots of boxes and bowls, um, all kinds of different shapes and, and sizes to keep things my, my these are all YouTube tutorials, my clips and things like that in. Um, one for reels of thread down here, all different shapes and sizes. I just find them really useful. I like to be organised and I like to know where everything is and when I reach into it that everything is there. So this one I think I'd be using for um, maybe threads because my smaller one here is getting a little overfilled. And then maybe the smaller box, I could make one matching of course, I could use that to keep bobbins in. But that's quite a nice size as well if you wanted to pop um, a plant in there. Obviously it's not waterproof, you have to put a tray in the bottom as well. Um, but a row of those on a windowsill with plants in would look rather sweet as well. I'm, I'm thinking maybe in, in your conservatory. Um, but again, really nice quick make. If you're making these as gifts, it might be quite nice to put the gift inside here, maybe in some um, cellophane or, or tissue paper with a bow around it and just have that sitting on the outside. So you've got a gift of maybe some sweets or some homemade cakes that you've made and then you've got the gift of the box that you're putting it in as well. So this one made to the pattern that's in the Tilda book. This one I went off piste a little bit and just made it larger. But once you understand the way that the pattern actually works, you can make these in any size that you like. So you can make them smaller than this one, you can make them even bigger than this one as well. But I do love that cross shape at the bottom, I think it's quite unusual. And it's an easy way of putting a base into a box without cutting out corners or, or squishing them together and sewing across like we do with a lot of um, bags that we make. So I hope that's useful for you. I hope the box is useful for you and I hope the tutorial is useful for you as, as, as well. Um, I shall see you again very soon. Bye bye.